in a world wrought with struggle and strife. A world rich with beauty and grandeur. A world where peril lies around every corner. A world of caste and pony. One group steps up to share the perspective of the masses in this the world of Warcraft. We are Ponycast, the voice of the players. You have crossed into the world of the dead in search of answers. Welcome back. You are listening and or watching Pwncast. This is episode 69 and we are in patch 6.2. I am your... <laughs> I am your... can hate these guys. I am your warlock host, Bell. We are down Fryza today because apparently he chose free food over us. Uh, or, I mean, I don't turn down free food, but I think it's kind of crappy that we got left in the dust for free food. Uh, but I did bring the rest of the Riders of Rohan with me, and in the interest of full disclosure, this entire episode is going to be obscene in jesters uh, in relation to the fact that this is our 69th episode. Uh, so be preparing for, for random innuendos throughout the entire episode, I'm <laughs> sure. I just, I just had dinner, so I'm good. <laughs> I so wanted to throw out one of those in your endos. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is not trade chat. Uh, there's no anal talk here. Uh, I did bring the rest of the Riders of Rohan with me. I did bring the Death Knight who went into purgatory because he won't stop fucking eating pie like him. I was good. You know what? And I think I actually have a whole pie sitting over here. And that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the show. So everybody that's not watching this in the stream, I've got the rest of the pie. And I've not eaten. And I'm going to sit there and... That better be sugar-free. Because I'm seriously calling your mother. Like, I'm not even joking. I have her on my Facebook, and I'm going to call her. <laughs> mind over matter, honey. If I don't mind, it doesn't matter. For those of you that don't know, <laughs> his name is Lycan, and he's got diabetes. So he likes to eat pie, because clearly that's the thing to do when you're on <laughs> the specific set of diabetes that he has uh, that requires him to regulate his diet. So... And you know what's really funny, though? My mother gave me the pie. No, okay. she would never. She most certainly did. <gasps> you know what? You go right ahead and eat it because I'm making up for it. Sugar free. See? That nobody That's likes sweet. anything like that. That looks like it's it's good for you, and I'm not a fan of it. We're balancing out. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought the world. Man logic. This is why men should not rule the world. Uh, well, we're glad that you're at least alive uh, currently, even though you're probably going to you know, drop after the show because sure. the sugar and such. But I did also bring the shaman who used bacon to bribe the mount gods this week in World of Warcraft. Huge bloke. Yes, yes. I got, all, I got three mount this week and I'm very very happy because I never have to go to Kara again. What mounts did you get? I got the Fiery War Horse um, from the first boss in Kara. So there's one of those and there's one of those for all the people out there. That Hang on, there's more them. coming. I'm, I've got codes <laughs> as well. Um, no, no, I'm not seeing anyone. Anyone <laughs> else? Um, I got the uh, the Drake of the South Winds. Ooh, I think it is. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Oh, one from Lycan. Beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, and one of the... Uh, I, you know what? I didn't even summon it. I don't even know what it was, but I got another mount from one of the Warlord's bosses, uh, outdoor bosses. Like, you got a mount, you don't even know what it is. That deserves a, a finger. The, yeah. the I honestly couldn't tell you. I looted it, I clicked it, I put it in the inventory, and I went straight on to killing another rare and totally forgot about it up until about three seconds ago. You Bacon for everyone! You disappointed See, me. I told you. And pie. And, as long as well, it's dinner for two. And sugar-free country. <laughs> gonna, dinner for two is going to be happening all night. Uh, yes. That's what she said. Mm. <laughs> uh, God, that's what he wishes. I, I'll pay that. It's going to be a great <laughs> episode 69, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I did also bring the boomkin who went back in time this week and felt a bit nostalgic. Huge, uh, huge bloke. Uh, huge for shots. No, go ahead, huge bloke. You got this. No, I did. It stuffed in a thing, and it was from the uh, Sorry about and that. I was the best while I was doing it. You know, no. <laughs> what no. time walking dungeons did you do? Uh, the Burning Crusade ones that are available this week. Uh, Mana Tomes. Um, the one that's right next to Serpentine Caverns. With the thing um, in the place with the people? Got it. Yeah, those, those things. Uh -huh. And... I was a little disappointed because it basically puts you in Black Temple gear. 
or the equivalent of Black Temple gear running through it, so it's still a little bit of a face roll, but there's just a few things you can't avoid. Um, but it was still fun, and I was, my first time in there, I was like, this is amazing, and then it's boring, and then they didn't even put the optional boss in for Mana Tomes, and I was like, this, heartbroken. Yeah. So... All right, well, I'm glad everybody is here, alive, well, present, and accounted for. So we do have quite a bit to talk about this week. Uh, there's been a lot of things happening, both PTR, Legion-related, the QA, uh, the developers with the QAs are going on on so many different avenues. It seems like everybody's being able to interview them. Once again, why can't we? I don't know, maybe because we haven't tried, um, but we need to get in on that interview train action happening. So there is a time walking event, which uh, Hots was just telling you guys about it, and it does go till the 17th, so make sure you go get your time walking on and uh, feel the burn, the pain, whatever it is you want to feel. I don't really know how that works out. I have not uh, got to step into any of that, so you guys should check it out. It's worth it, especially for the 700. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I got brand new bracers. They were actually a very big upgrade from what I used to have. That, that goes to a Monday, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's the 17th. Um, also, Luminosity and World of Warcats were qualified for BlizzCon Finals. Luminosity did win the cup today. So um, they did not disappoint, uh, true to Luminosity form. They've been pretty pretty epic the last couple battles. So uh, I think that's pretty awesome. And I, was this the last one, or they still have one more set? Or was that it? Uh, I think that's it. Now we have EU. You, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yes. And then... And we will be tracking that as well. We're not, uh, you know, we're not all about just, you know, North America. We will make sure that we I track... the base. What? America. I... America. What is happening? <laughs> you guys, I don't even know. Did you? Are you guys drunk? Like, on a scale of one to Lindsay Lohan, how drunk are you? About 69. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that uh, was funny. For me, about the Olsen twins. About the, about the, well, they don't eat, I'm so hit, that's a really I'm, I'm sad life. Right? Yeah. I had dinner tonight, but yeah, I understand. <laughs> so Tom Chilton had made a statement uh, to YogaCast, and the statement was, Azeroth is the only world that we know of uh, that Legion has not conquered yet. So I'm assuming that this has to do with people QQing over us dealing with the Legion again. I'm so sick of hearing people bitch about that. Get over it, move on, it's happening, you can't change it, so just love it. Learn to love it, be one with Legion, because it's happening. Um... I, I mean, that's a pretty valid point. We're the old, I mean, naturally, at some point, there would have to be a huge battle royale because they like to conquer all the things, and we're the only thing that they have not been able to conquer. Uh, except for probably Jaina, because Jaina's been around and had everybody, so, I mean. Give her a second, she'll find the demon. I, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but with that statement, though, and what would really hit me when I read that is that this is the only world that we know of that they haven't conquered. That means that the Legion has really taken over the rest of the universe. And they have conquered every other planet out there. It's a very loaded plant or loaded uh, statement that that Chilton would make the Yogs cast. You know, saying saying that this oh, it's is Yogg. I said yoga. Yeah. Awkward. Close enough. You know, same same. Yeah, I'm not even. I'll be. I'll behave myself. But yeah, if this is the only planet that they've not conquered, um, is that going to open up to what a future expansion or what future expansions are going to lead into? <laughs> are we going to be visiting some of these? Other do you think conquered. he does that on purpose? Well, no, yes. but, he, but Lycan has a point. Here's the thing. At some point, we're going to run out of shit to do. There, mm -hmm. What more can we possibly do in this world that we know? They're going to have to do a lead-in of... But no, I mean, you're, we're talking about the next 20 years of World of Warcraft. If they're trying to do yearly expansions... Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's at some point people are gonna be like, where's the new? Give me some something new. Take me off of Azeroth. Take me to... Fly me to the moon. I don't really care, but I mean, I think I think Lincoln has a good point. What is he potentially leading into? Not in the near future, but even, you know, these guys know this shit a, f a few years in advance. They kind of know the direction they're taking things. Right. right. It, it, it was also in in the same week that they said that while it's not in the immediate plans, they have looked into the concept of uh, redeveloping not necessarily Warcraft Two, but a Warcraft Four. To, to go with their RPG games. And it's the same sort of thing. Like, they're loading... They're loading all these questions and statements just to 
I don't know. I sort of sit back and go, oh, you're doing that on purpose. It's like, just, PR. Just because, to get people talking yeah. and, and yeah. stuff like that. But at the same time, I'm sitting back going, like like you said, like how long can Warcraft possibly go on? Like I would love to see you know, a new development or a new story or a whole new setting or um, something along those lines. I wouldn't want to be the guy in charge of making that, but... I, th- I, th- I think that he's, he's way more clever than people give him credit for, and that's why he, he dishes out those loaded statements. Yeah. Well, not only that, but the questions that are always said before, when you're going to go up to a developer and you're going to do an interview, you're going to have these questions out front. They're going to know what the questions are. They're going to have the answers researched and brought back to you. They don't make mistakes. Where they make their big mistakes is at BlizzCon. Whenever you see the red shirt guy twice <laughs> caught him. you know. Whenever uh-huh. they sit there and go, oh, crap, I think we're, we're, we're doing something wrong. You know, when they had mentioned about the, the South Seas expansion, and he says, is there something down? Well, yes, no, I don't know. You know, that's where you get the mistakes. These interviews they've done, they've had these questions. They know what the answers are going to be, and they prep this guy. Chilton did not go into that, into that interview blindly. And I'm, I'm telling you, Blizzard makes no, does not do anything by mistake. They do everything they, they need to do on purpose for a reason. I agree. I totally agree. Uh-huh. Pretty excite about some pets and mounts that are going to be happening in Legion. Uh, I actually went uh, a little bit ago to kind of check out all the pictures again. To I was trying to make sure I matched the names up with the pictures. And when I'm looking at one of the Facebook posts, somebody had re- had commented on uh, something that was posted regarding the new pets and mounts that are coming to Legion. That uh, you know it's going to be a good expansion when they're not reskins. So I mean, it's been a lot of reskinning over what. The last, they reskinned a lot of Mr. Pandaria stuff. They're reskinning yeah. another one. What do you mean? The 300 mounts. Well, yeah, but oh, be, I don't like any of the one, things. Yeah. yeah, the the Emerald Drake is ugly. It's the same as all the other ones. It's just a different hue green. It's stupid. I don't even get me started. I'm gonna rage on that. I know you already have it, like in. You're awesome. So. The BlizzCon pet, if you're purchased, if, if you're going to BlizzCon and or we're pretty sure it's a virtual ticket because it's always the same thing, uh, you do get Mercadan. Naturally, it was going to be an Illidan Murloc. He looks pretty cool, though, with his little... I love my little Gromosh, my Gromloc. He's adorable. So, Mercadan. Not... Here's going to be his abilities. Now, I don't normally list out the abilities for pets, but I thought this was pretty awesome. Shadow Flash, Fell Immolate, uh, Neither, Nether, however you decide to say it, Gate, Eye Beam, Immolation, and Mercamorphosis. I was really uh, pretty happy with those. I I got to admit, even I'm impressed with how much they've worked murky into that <laughs> yeah. miracle. People get mad because it's always uh, Murloc, but I think that's become the tradition, and I, who can be mad about Murlocs? I freaking love it. That's how, that's how it's always been done and how it should Agreed. be done. Agree. Except for the first one. There was a BlizzCon bear. There was a mount. And yeah, and it was... Murloc yeah. in front of it. Oh, uh, okay. Holding the flag, uh, yep. Some other pets. You've got Bright Paw. It's going to be a store pet. That is adorable because it looks like a mini rune saber. Uh, the mystic rune sabers, the little purple ones. Uh, you've also got the uh, minion of Grumpus. You get that from Feast of Winter Vale. The mounts, which are pretty cool, you, uh, as we were talking about the reskinning, the Heavenly Azure Cloud Serpent is the 300 reward mount. Uh, I mean, it's spectral, mm-hmm. just like all the other things. It's bright. well, semi-spectral. It's not 100% see-through, but it's got that white kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, flowy thing. People. <laughs> the very spectral look. I don't know. Uh, and then you also get... The Eclipse, uh, Dragonhawk, and Ironbound uh, Wrath Charger, and those are actually from Time Walking. You can actually purchase them with Time Walking tokens, which we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Now for the mounts, the other two mounts. The Illidari Fellstalker, which looks like the new Fell Hunter slash Demon uh, that you see up at the top of Tanan, the really legit looking. It, yeah, it's pretty... Yeah. It's pretty awesome. You can't be really mad about that. And then you've got the Grove Warden, which is a moose. Who doesn't like... I mean, people in Canada love moose, right? Mooses are awesome. Moose, meese, mouse. I'm not really sure what plural for moose is. Um, but moose? Is. I, <laughs> moose. 
but like simultaneously Canada and Alaska are like, yay, these pets and love mounds, us. <laughs> with the exception of Murky, is not a reskin. These are new concepts, and it's kind of like the Gromling. They Blizzard, you really know it's going to be a, a kick ass expansion when they're putting into it. And I think this is probably because they've heard a lot of t shit talking about the reskinning of things uh, over the last. Year That's now. been going on since DC, though. Like, why change? Yeah, it but it now? didn't used to be as blatant. Like, they would mix a few reskins in there with some new stuff, but it's all reskins recently. Well, I mean, what are we talking about? Every everyone's just saying this is the reskin of DC, so you know, brand yeah, new. The, the, so the it's just they're, re re they're reskinning. They're not reskinning all the people. They're just reskinning an expansion. You know. I'm like, do you see this? Vrykul like, are a reskin. I noticed that in the yeah. trailer. The who? The Vrykul. The, the Vrykul. Well, they have to be it's working. Legion. There's going to be some stuff that's going to be the same. I mean, yeah. I couldn't care less. I'm just happy that I recognize something. They can't change time. I mean, they can, but yeah. So They have. They have, oh, but I, I really think we're going to continue to see some good things. I haven't really been let down yet. I have uh, exclusively and specifically not looked at um, some of the recent PvP stuff because I'm afraid of how it's looking with some changes, so I will cover PvP stuff next episode. Um, I wanted to do it when Fryza's on because I like to watch him rage uh, and throw a little little QQ fit. So, yeah, I want to watch his uh, his face. Uh, let's see. For PTR, we've got BOA commendation items. Now, the cool thing about these BOA commendation items, obviously, BOA is for buying on accounts, so they can be sent to you different characters. Uh, it'll actually increase your rep with certain factions by 500 for these tokens. Now, you're going to be able to buy these tokens with your time walking tokens that you get from the time walking dungeons, right. along with the mount and uh, the upgrade tokens for BOA. So, if you're a time walker, sweet, you get. Increased rep. Uh, Get stuff for doing it. Yeah, and I love that because I would much rather buy rep tokens than have to go grind. Which I know some of you are going to be like, but Bell, that's the whole point of World of Warcraft. There's life beyond rep grinding, ladies and gentlemen. There's more to life than sitting in an area and killing shit with a pick. Like, seriously, it's going to be okay. But. See, I could say the same thing about PvP, but, you know. <laughs> Killing yeah, with how game. to make three enemies at once. Yeah, but that's... that's <laughs> Those that can't do make I'll fun. It's just like, eh, whatever. Right? Well, no, I, I, I think it's good that, <laughs> that they've added happens. that in because every every avenue of the game now has a shortcut. Yeah, so if you're a PvP, you can go out and buy these tokens and boost your reps. Same um, and, and same other way around. Like, They're it's good. They, they cover you bases. to do things that you don't want to do but you might necessarily need to do. Um, and yep. they're they're making it easier for you, and I think that's awesome. Uh, yeah, and it's good for people like me who just get bored and lazy. You uh, know. No. I've never been one. Not me. My my twin brother. Yeah. Ghost, ghost bloke. Uh, the Amish guy, right? Oh yeah. no, that's your real brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those of you who don't know, Bloke has a brother who looks pretty similar to him in nature, except he looks more Amish, uh, naturally. But, uh, yes, and he was wearing a suit, which made him look even more Amish. I think it was his wedding, and it was pretty, I was like, what is going on? Uh, yeah. He's Amish. That's him indeed. He would play World of Warcraft, but he ain't allowed to have a computer. You know, that's how they are. Unless it's Rumspringer, whatever it's called when they get well, to act out. Well, can't they get a squirrel to run the power generator for it? <laughs> I know an awful lot about Amish people because there was this, uh, uh, there was a, a, tr a reality something that life might life on, as an Amish something, and it was on TLC, and I used to <laughs> I'm done. I uh, promise I'm done. I'm she officially... Watches, she also watches Amish Mafia. I, and I watch Little People Big World, uh, even though they're getting divorced. <laughs> but anyway, that being said, I've already spoke too much about my private life, so... <laughs> but my... At least not, you didn't talk about 6 and 9. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, this week's episode brought to you by the letters uh, F and U and the numbers 6 and 9. <laughs> so now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes, which is the latest of... Sh now, this is a combination of several different pieces and parts of Q&As uh, from different avenues with the developers that they've been doing interviews. What is going on right now? He's just like, we're going to move on into the meat and potatoes. Or I'm like, really? We just <laughs> had to go straight sexual? back to it. How is that sexual? You've never heard that saying. Really? Aw. 
See, they don't talk about stuff like that on Amish TV. <laughs> <laughs> How is meat and potatoes relevant at all to you? Never heard that terminology. Yeah, meat and two meat veg, and meat and two potatoes. Meat and potatoes for dinner. That's yeah, disgusting. I'm, I'm going to get I my sharpie think. out and draw you a picture. I live in Arizona. <laughs> Swampy balls is not a thing. Girls don't like that. Get it out of our face, seriously. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. <laughs> now I'm moving on. <laughs> now I'm moving on. Now that I hit you with a little bit of... I live in a hot state where swampy balls is a thing. Stop putting them in girls' faces. We don't like it. Anyway, moving Corn, on. Cornflower fixes then. I'm going to throw <laughs> them Seriously. Here you can make dinner. <laughs> Recycle. We're living on a tight budget. It's, it's gross. Okay, so now that we've completely lost track of anything we were talking about. I, didn't even had, I haven't even had a drink yet tonight. That's awesome. Um, so back to the – I don't know how to recover – from what just happened with cornstarch and everything. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Developer Q&A. That's where we're at. Yes. That's where uh, we're at. Okay. So <clears throat> the invasion, which is something they've talked about quite a few times, because they're going to slowly ease us into the expansion, as in they're going to give us a lot of stuff, like, leading into the launch of the expansion, which they did a little bit of that. They, I think that was, like, their practice run in Warlords, where they did, you know, they had a... Um, we went to the dark portal and then we we killed some shit and fought some other shit and got some other things. We got a pet, got some cool stuff. Um, and I think you got rings or something, right? From yeah, there's some, yeah. So they are going to start. Um, it's going to hit all of Azeroth. So you're going to be able to see the invasion in, I don't know if it's every zone, but I'm pretty sure it's the majority of the major zones, right? It, it had that feeling to it. I, I'm super, super excited to see what this event is. Is because the way he was like the way it's been spoken of in a couple of different interviews, like they're sort of talking it up that like this is going to be the pre launch event of like all pre launches, and you're just going to be so super psyched to be a part of it. And there's like chaos and just hell breaking out everywhere. Like, yeah. we that that beats the they opening said of the that dark the expansion was me. going to be in 2016. Yeah, so. I'm pretty sure we're still right on the money with the January, February thing. I'm pretty sure we're going to see beta here real quickly, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be January and February. I mean, realistically, they can go to the movie launches and still be within their year, right? Because we haven't been in Warlords a full year yet. Um, a so year's... Come, what, it's November? November. November. A full year. Yeah. So, well, it's then again, November. maybe I'm wrong then. If they're going a full year, I don't really think they're going to do that, though. They need subscriptions. No. They need to bring people back. Uh, they are losing money by the day, literally. So um, we're going to see new demons and engines of war that we've never seen before uh, with this event. There's going to be a period of time over weeks that Azeroth is being invaded and various factions will decide how they're basically going to have, handle it individually. Uh, players will have demon invasions that they will need to fight against all leading up to the launch of the expansion. The Broken Shore will be a part of this launch event. How fucking awesome is that? I can't wait. Give it to me now. Eventually, I, if you're listening, now. There's more. Eventually, you will be able to fly in Legion, but not right away. Basically similar to Warlords. Uh, starting in Patch 7, uh, the first steps towards the flying achievement will be available. So, okay, we don't have to listen to anybody cry. Oh, I can't fly ever. I'm going to cry. Oh, you're making me do stuff to fly. I hate you. Seriously. Get over it. <laughs> they don't have to allow you to fly. I agree. It doesn't it's, say anywhere in that game plan right. that it says that you get a flying mount. Well, people are but, like, I pay for this. You pay for what? To get in your car and drive across Azeroth? What the, What do you mean? You? I don't understand. Right. So, As for the pre-launch, I can't wait. Um, I love the Cataclysm pre-launch because, you know, when you had Deathwing flying around, destroying the different zones, I'll never How forget. How long did this in... happen before? The... Uh, that, that, about a that, month, that, month and a half. That. That was, yeah, that was just short of two months, I think. Yeah, because they've done it with everything. I mean, when when I wasn't there for Wrath, but they said when Wrath, that was when they had the big plague thing that, like, decimated cities. Wrath, because, Wrath was mental. Storm yeah, you, was one of them for the Cataclysm one, right? Because I remember before they mm -hmm. fixed Stormwind, you had the claws. I didn't – I wasn't there for the launch of Cataclysm. I mean, I played, but I didn't – I didn't get to see the pre-event stuff. Yeah, for, like – I know for Wrath, they had – they had one where Orgrimmar and Stormwind and all the major cities, people were just dying all over the place because they would have people dispel the, the plague that was being brought through, the disease, and it was actually killing. You would log in and you would die Im immediately because somebody gave you this nasty plague. 
Um, but it, that was a whole bis- big mistake. But they've always gone huge on their big launches. Say Cataclysm, I remember I was down in Tenaris, just marching along on my little level 40-something Lobie, and next thing you know, I get die in a sea of fire. You know, and you got the achievement for standing yeah. in fire. So they've done a lot of big expansions. If this is as big as they say that it's going to be, and this is going to be this this – you know, expansion to beat all other expansions. I, I can't wait to see what they have planned because it, it's it's got to be none, none less than epic. That's that's how I knew we were in trouble with Warlords because they're like pre-launch event. I'm like, yay! Got down there on huge bloke, and uh, like 15 minutes later, it was done. I'm like, yeah. The fuck? Where's the rest of it? Like, where's the millions of people dying? And it was just all over. It was like it was almost a non-event. So they, I'm um, yeah, I'm hoping that it is back to a grand scale and just shit dying everywhere and chaos and like really just building up that hype for the for the actual launch. So you think our garrisons are going to get invaded? <laughs> I hope they get invaded and burned to the ground and can never be used again. Oh no, terrible, it's gone. Oh, I don't that. <laughs> Seriously, people get really upset when you talk about their garrisons being taken away. I'm not subbing uh, until I know for sure garrisons are going to be in the next expansion. Seriously? Wait a minute. In this See fuck, the first person that was standing there going before, I can't believe we got to do this garrison shit. That's all we do is stand around them. And then now they're going to complain when we get rid of them. I like my garrison. I don't dislike it. I won't use it if we don't need it. Doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I'm fine in my garrison. I'm fine in the hub. I don't care. It's not that serious to me because I. I'm a social gamer. Well, no, I'm not a social gamer, but like I'm a social person while gaming. So I will find the people. I don't need to be physically standing next to a tune to communicate with them. Hi, there's trade chat, there's general chat, there's looking for group chat, there's guild chat, party chat, instance chat. Literally, you don't need to be physically Skype. standing next to somebody to communicate with them. <laughs> Skype, Teams for Heat, Mumble, That's Ventrilo. right. That's right. So, Facebook. Uh, I mean, take I'll, everything I'll, with a great assault guys like seriously relax it's not like they nerfed destruction or anything oh wait they already did that <laughs> they they did i was waiting for it i was waiting for they it already did that what were you saying like it i will probably still use my garrison i will probably that's I'm where sure. i'll park my character when i go to log out is i'll hearth back to my garrison that's my castle i like it i get you to know? i sit by the fire that's where i log out i just sit right by the fire and pull up a chair and roast some marshmallows and I'm not that bad. There's no privacy in my town hall because there's people just walking in and out of there. And Leroy randomly waves to you throughout the day. He, you're just standing there and he's like, uh, hi. Pleasure bot scares me more. And Croman's walking around naked. Shit's he, just gone. I, why does he not have, please put some clothes on that poor. The loincloth thing is real. Uh, so I would like to see some dates. And when I say dates, I don't want to see like this exact date. I'd like to see, give us a lead in on, on time wise so that we know what we're looking at, but they would never do that because then they would lose subscriptions if it's longer than what they propose. Cause then people will be like, eh, I'll just unsub until close to the expansion. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's going to be quite a while that we're going to be in this invasion event until the launch. For the reason of the subscriptions, because they will need to bring people back. So I'm pretty sure we're probably, we can probably expect that things are going to be able to progress us in um, over the course of a couple months. I don't really see them doing like a two, three week thing. I see them kind of dragging this out to get subscriptions. Just my opinion. I could be be wrong. I'd be thinking at least a month. Yeah, it usually goes for a month, a month and a half. And that gives people ample amount of time to do Blizzard's never been this broke where WoW's concerned. Now, they're making other money with other games, but World of Warcraft specifically, they've never been this broke. uh, It came out the other day. Hearthstone is banking about $20 20 million million. a month. So I can understand. You don't have to charge for shit. You just offer free... You know how much victim I fall to buying shit in fucking Facebook games? every day right because i have to buy like clash of clans i have to buy more things so i spend 9.95 and get a million of the elixirs and stuff i don't need gems you're living proof that 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 model works it's true i'm like i'm the only one that does it really hats no because i don't buy those i've bought cards for hearthstone and, oh, I bought. I went through when know. they were. Remember when they were on sale for like six dollars the pack? Yeah. I must have bought like thirty. And I, I like it. I mean, Hearthstone for you know not to not to go off on too much of a tangent, but Hearthstone is doing something right. They're, they're you know they're moving a lot of content, and this is what they're trying to move with World of Warcraft is they're moving a lot of content very quickly through that. 
I mean, we've had, what, two expansions in under a year that that thing's been open. And To be fair, their expansions are really easy to do because it's not right. a ton of, but yes, you're right. But, but, they're, but they're pushing the content out and they're keeping people interested into the game. You know, somebody finally gets all the cars and they've mastered their deck and they've got the perfect deck. Oh, by the way, here comes a bunch of mechanomes. They did you the know, smartest thing they could have ever done, which is they made it mobile. Yeah. Yes. Yes. See, that's how you it's save sweet. garrisons. Make them mobile. But when you're making a quarter billion dollars off of one of your products and you still have World of Warcraft, you could take a hit on Warcraft with making a quarter billion dollars a year. You know. uh, well, investors don't see it that way because investors are about their money. They, yeah, great, we're getting money over here on this product, but they know they would be having even more if World of Warcraft was doing its normal numbers. But let me ask you this, and this is what I, this is what I keep going back to your comment last week about you know something being up with this expansion. Where are the investors saying, Blizzard, Activision, what the hell are you doing? Where are the numbers of Blizzard, Activision's uh, stocks plummeting? They should be. When your number one flagship program out there is, is, is doing this. No, they don't plummet it, when they have expansions. No. But, when, but no. But before the expansion was even announced, before all this, they knew the numbers were going to be bad I'm, coming in. But I'm sure the investors were well aware of the grand plan. And I'm sure there's still something in the background going, hey, by the way, guys, stay calm because this is going to come up. I agree. I think so, there's something I think we there's don't more know to come. I right. agree with you. So really to get the lowdown on what's coming in, in – your future expansions. Who wants to sponsor me so I can go buy some Blizzard Activision shares? Uh, yeah. And then uh, I promise I when I get the like newsletter, each. I checked I'll recently. Buy, I'll, I'll sell a kidney and buy two, One and then I'll be able to tell everyone what's coming in the next I'm expansion. I'm going to start investing. Uh, not, maybe not necessarily in Blizzard. I don't know, but I want to start doing investments. But Blizzard would be a good one because we're pretty accurate in our predictions with stuff comes out and what you do is you buy when their numbers are crappy and they're talking shit and then you do it before an expansion is going to hit and then you make a shit ton of money and you sell all that stuff and everything's golden i'm not an investor i don't deal with money. you sell out in the first three months when everybody's come back to play right. before they unsub because they get bored again right yep 28 they're only at 28 29 28 68 but like i said i'm looking at the charts right now from the lot well the last year or so it really hasn't been that bad. They have not gone to this big, you know, plummet. There's still something that we don't know. Yeah, something but that, that they've reached. For them, though. They're new, normally in the $100 range. Well, they did a split recently. That's why. They did? So what they, yeah, so they split, the, they split it three or four ways. And so if you, if you have one stock at 100 and they split it four ways, you now have four, four stocks at 25 apiece. And it makes the price cheaper for people to buy, and that increases their stock value. How many would you get for sixty nine dollars? <laughs> <laughs> At least enough for two people. Shut the fuck. <laughs> you have enough for dinner for two. What's happening? Uh, okay, so yeah, See? I think they're at the one hundred thirty eight, latest... which was dinner for two, four, we... but that's just something totally different. We moved pretty quickly through the news. Um, I also wanted to state I loved reading all of the comments on last week's episode. Really, really good stuff. It was really difficult for me to read every single one in its entirety because you guys really went in depth with those comments because I was out of town last week. But I really, really, really appreciated uh, the time that you guys took to banter back and forth with us. And I know that somebody had asked a question uh, and like, and you were going to address it, right? Yes. It was regarding I, artifacts? I, it was. I had the thing here, but I did not pull their name. It was Stephen somebody. Let me see here. Stephen Powers. When Mr. Powers asked, he said, I have a theory and was wondering what you all thought. With the introduction of artifact weapons for, uh, for players, we may need to see a few big NPCs vanish or take a lesser role. An example of how this may happen would have to be Thrall, Varian, or Tyrion forced to play through a portal, or forced through a portal by Gul'dan to the homeland of the Burning Legion, leaving behind Doomhammer and Asperger. This would allow for why a player would eventually wield these weapons and also set up for future expansions for us to rescue these iconic NPCs. Just my two cents. Great show this week. Tell like I'm sorry the DKs are not the special snowflakes anymore. Poor baby. So, um, as for an answer to your question, because of the last statement, no. So let's go ahead and move on. No, I think <laughs> that's way better than death. If he, I like his thought process because if you, if we port them, that is future expansion stuff. Right. Um, Versus just killing them. 
That was a great. And then there's a big and dramatic was... moment with Finn and his son, where his son's been searching for a hundred years for his dad, and he finally finds him in like this abandoned like hole in the ground, and he's like, "Dad, I love you." And Ren's like, "I love you, son." And they have this big. <laughs> Don't moment. start the daddy issues again, because you know if I mean? you see the reply that one of the comments got on there, I really, I just did exactly the same thing and got a whole sidetrack thing about yeah, throw. Like you think um, about it, like story wise, would you not tear up when Anduin's like looking for his dad because his dad's been like in prison somewhere? High like no, Barry's been disappeared already before. And I I'm told you over that. But he... I told you my life story, and you didn't cry. I mean, <laughs> your life story consists of sitting in my house. That's your life story right now. And yeah, eating pizza right now. Yeah, pizza. So no, but anyway. that, that was that was my theory with Doomhammer it was. Thrall's going to turn around and be like, oh, like, uh, I'm having, I'm going to be a dad and she's having a baby and fuck this, I'm not dying to the Legion. And he's going to do a drop, drop the mic and just drop Doomhammer and be like, peace out, bitches, and get on his Mecho Chopper and, and ride away. And whoever gets to pick up Doomhammer first gets it. How about this? That was my theory. The I wasn't with, far off. <laughs> no, and the thing with Thrall, if you, if you watched what happened um, during the battle between. Thrall and Gar- Garrosh um, in the Grand where he kills Garrosh. Sorry, spoiler alert. If you people have not seen it by now, shame on you. Oh, yeah, that's really... Yeah. That's, I don't think that's a spoiler anymore. That's pretty much fact. I still haven't so seen I'm, the r one yet, so... It, so what I'm thinking is, though, it, we're just... Oh, no, you're... We'll talk later. There was already um, a spoiler. You already know, obviously, what's happening, because you... Well, now, so... Oh. I haven't so seen with, the video. But with that mock aura that he did with, with Garrosh... Mock Garage, you're not allowed to use spells, you're not allowed to use magic. It is hand to hand physical combat, you know, till one either submits or most likely till one dies, and that is how you settle the score. Thrall cheated. He straight up used the elements, he called down the lightning, he called up the hand from the earth, he straight up cheated in that Mock Garage. And I think what may happen with Thrall is you could have a storyline where he walks in, goes to Vol'jin, saying, Look, you know, this shit's bad. I'm going to be here for you if you need my help. But I'm not even worthy to wield Doomhammer anymore. Because he was, he was not, it was not an honorable fight. And, and then he drops, yeah. drops it. And for, and for an orc, honor is everything. I'm going to be so disappointed if we get to this expansion and the chamois go out there and Thrall doesn't do a drop the mic with Doomhammer. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I think we got some solid theories. Yeah, and with Varian, I still th- I still say Varian goes. He's I think I he's gonna so. die. I think he because just the way he looked whenever the Burning Legion is coming through, I think he's gonna go headstrong into it like he normally does, and he's gonna make a, a fatal mistake. You and think he's, he's gonna Miley Cyrus on a wrecking ball or what? Y- yep. And I think I, I think so. you're gonna have I think you're gonna have Anduin finally have to step up from being a sniveling little kid to be the king of Stormwind and technically the leader of the alliance. And you're right, there are going to be some big changes. They've already told us that both sides are not going to be happy. And they're talking both sides of the player for, player base are not going to be happy with some of the changes that are come up. Well, so well, because we better. already know, if we're taking over these legendary weapons and we're wielding them in battle as the heroes, obviously we're somebody isn't going to have the weapons, so what, mm-hmm. you know? Yep, for, I think you're right too. I think Magni Bronzebeard's going to come back. I think somebody's finally going to use a pickaxe on him and prospect that diamond and finally get Magni out of it. And they're going to have him to purify the purify Ashbringer because he's the only one that's going to be able to forge it. Because in, in that screenshot that we posted on the page, like I like the way it was worded that Magni uh, reforges Ashbringer. Or, or, like the way it's worded, it implies that he's back. Right. It may, and it's not Ashbringer itself. It's a copy of it. Mm-hmm. So that sort of led to the theory that, like, the original Ashbringer is still floating around somewhere. Right. You've just, just got a dodgy knockoff. So, uh, I, I could go into each one for each one of the artifacts. I, I mean, that that would take up an entire show on itself, but... I think you should uh, take Steven, that on yeah. over the next course of the couple of weeks. I think you should just take let, that on. Yeah. Look up some of the things that are going to happen. Take a look at some of the things leading up to the uh, Warlords and through it, and you'll see some big changes are going to happen. So, so let's talk uh, about our week weeks in WoW, because it is that time uh, for us to wrap things up. Uh, Lycan, what did you do this week, Amal? I did my five time worker, time worker dungeons and finally got my set, I got a very nice set upgrade for my tanking. Um, of course, we raided. We got all the way up through Sokathar. We're finally working on Tyrant Bahari. Uh, we should have her down by Sunday, so I'm very proud of that, and just doing the RBGs. 
What about you, Buck? Oh, and eating dinner. For two, I, right? For two. I, I did my, my, my amounts, obviously, but I actually, for a change, sat down and did the entirety of LFR this week and trying to get the, the stones that you need this time around to, to work towards the rings. The tomes? And, and, and surprisingly, it was... Uh, you need tomes, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, those things. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it wasn't as painful as I thought it was going to be. And, like, just back-to-back, back, smashed through all the different wings and, and got to see, obviously, the, the newest wing, and, and that was really cool. Just uh, just chipping away at the storyline. I'll get there eventually. So I think last the last chapter's next week for me. So. Bloody casual. Yeah, I'm like I'm. No, I'm not even worthy of being called a casual. I'm like a. He's an, he's part, a I'm like a part. I'm a part-time casual. I'm a sometimeser. Uh, Hots, what did you do this week? I did a lot of things this week. I geared my row for RBGs. I got my first level 100, like max level warlock through any expansion. I got my green fire. Um. What is warlock. your spec? Uh, it's Destro slash Affliction. But can you tell people how fun Destro is? Just Destro so we're clear, because you're you're an actually, elitist, so yeah, Destro is actually a lot of fun, and it's it's very entertaining to just send this. Jo- I was always just like chaos bow, chaos bow, num 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 as it flies to the air, and then I was like, hey, those are <laughs> wicked, aren't they? they uh, and, and you got to check it. out the void the void lord in his all his glory. Yeah, it was that was a I did it for a friend of mine last or in mop so i know how hard it originally was to get green fire 47 and ways what it took me uh i don't mm-hmm. remember for me it might have been like 10 15 i don't know it was i'm sure it was, it was more, i'm sure i'm not the only one that had at least oh, four yeah, nights on that bad boy well you, you gotta remember i had to do it for a friend they did it for like six i, I, had, yeah, I did it as a non-raider i had regular standard everyday average joe chum gear i did, did it as a non-raider yeah um and then I did time walking on two different tunes. Uh, I feel weird because my warlock is now wearing all DC gear, but it's 660 item level, and I'm just like, I feel amazing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's yeah. pretty awesome. Destruction for the win. So I did not get to spend much time in WoW this last week because I did spend four days of this last week in California sampling the fine cuisine of tacos and uh, sugar-free Red Bull. I did have, um, I did, <laughs> it's sugar-free, man. Yeah, it's so. There's That's a story. That's just deadly to me. There's like, a story behind literally. it. So for those, a lot of you know, because a lot of you follow the page and a lot of you already know that uh, I was, have been doing a month and a half long interview process. I did get the job. I did go to California for onboarding for the week. And it's my perfect nerd job, first of all. Perfect nerd job ever. Uh, I don't know. It like, and felt like he was going to do something weird. Uh, and since it's episode 69, it's not out of the question. So I, that's what I thought was happening. <laughs> So I did go, I was really, really super nervous because, you know, the first day jitters and it's a tech company, obviously it's what I do for a living is technology and um, I'm, you know, nice and dressed and businessy and, and trying not to say the word fuck every five minutes. And I get there and everybody, you know, the, the whole team, they all, developers, they all mismatch clothes, wrinkle clothes, hair sticking straight up, they don't even mind. Our whole building is Star Wars in nature. There's Star Wars everywhere, including painted murals. There, each conference room is named something in Star Wars, like Hoth, Endor. Literally, everything is Star Wars related. Um, there, everybody has like there's toys all over the place. There's four nerf stations. We have a whole top floor of a really big building, and there's when I say nerf stations, like there's stations with nerf guns and ammo, and you shoot people. I rode around on a scooter because there's scooters to get around the office if you're feeling so inclined. So, take me to the break area, game room, ping pong, all the gaming consoles and a big screen TV, old Atari where you had to sit across from each other and the whole like box was the game. As if that wasn't enough. They then take me to the break room where, if you guys have seen the movie Interns, it was like Google's break room. Literally. <laughs> like if you've seen that movie, that's what it was like. They walked me up to this refrigerator. Row after row after row of all the things you could possibly want to drink. Bottom row. And you don't have to pay for it? Bottom row, beer. Nice. 
the whole bottom row, beer. I look at the top of the fridge. There's expensive alcohol of the hard alcohol kind. So, you know me, I point and I'm like, so what are the rules regarding the beer? <laughs> like, oh, it, it's at for after five. If you're here for after five, then it's all yours. But no, there's no charge for anything. They have every K-cup, Starbucks K-cup you could possibly imagine. Uh, food, I mean, literally, like, my nerd... I don't even know what you would even call it, but my nerd heaven. But unfortunately, California, a, a lot of parts of it, especially uh, what the parts I've seen in San Jose, they're very into a different style. They drink a lot of sugar-free things, a lot of tofu on the menu for different things, clean eating, all that kind of stuff. So I did pick up the sugar-free uh, Red Bull habit because it was readily available, and who doesn't like free? So, yeah, I didn't get to do a whole lot in, in WOW this week because uh, I was – out of town, but I wanted to share with you guys my my nerd job that's fucking amazing. Anyway, uh, so we are going to actually wrap this up. Uh, you guys don't know this, but we've had to stop the show about seven times already because my headset, everything's going kerwonky. I upgraded to Windows 10, and then I downgraded back because I hated everything, and nothing's been the same since. So upgrade with caution, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> For those of you listening to the show and not watching it, like it has held up a picture that says my internet sex tape and it's uh, 69 arranged by <sighs> of tape. <gasps> what are you doing with him? Dirty Australian. Oh, wow. Disgusting. Make sure you check us out. Um, I'm actually not going to need to give you our find us information because as you guys have probably already seen, you're going to see everybody's Twitter, Twitter handle right here uh, in the boxes from now on so we can save time not giving that information but bloke wanted to give a shout out to a few different groups which uh, blizzcon 2015 is a huge group uh road to blizzcon the blizzcon blizzcon workout group what am i there's missing a, there's, there's a whole bunch of them and, and like cause in between gaming i've been getting immersed in the whole community and really just uh you in the singles group because i'm going to call you out right now and ask why you're in the blizzcon singles group it's not just for singles per I don't have a partner. It's for people that are going to the convention by themselves, gone solo style. The um, you're not going by yourself. We are a team. What? And you're going with Leah, too. The, bo the, the boss isn't coming to the con. Oh, that's right? true. She's got shopping and, to do. Leave her alone. Yeah, she, yeah she's... Oh, oh, don't stop <laughs> you're um, going to have any money left at the end of each day. You're going to be flat broke. I'll get revenge when I finally get to the Blizz merch. Don't you bloke. worry. Nobody else laughs. But, bloke. No. Um, <laughs> no, like, like I said, like I've, I've been joining, I've been joining all the groups, and they're they're long-standing groups as well. So they're they're trying to encourage people that even if you're not going this year, you can jump you can jump in these groups anyway and get an idea of what, of what you're diving in for next year if you if you're going to try and and go next year or even the year after. And there's literally a group, um, be it on Facebook for Everything like there's like like we said like the BlizzCon 2015 the the big group where all the information is there's um uh the road to BlizzCon so if you need travel advice if you're coming from interstate or from a different country people giving out all kinds of tips for that there's the beer swap and wine swap group there's the solos one there's a group specifically for the ladies uh, that are going by themselves and and you know, don't want to get harassed and, and all that sort of stuff. Who There's is a, this kind of doesn't want to be harassed. Is there one for dinner plans? <laughs> I, I haven't found one yet, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll So the moral playing. of the story is there's a shit ton of BlizzCon groups on the interweb, so make sure you search BlizzCon in your groups and you will find we, a ton. We, we've been posting them on the page, and, and if you if you have the intention of going, go check them out because they're all, they're all good people, they're all good eggs, and the wealth of information that's there um, is completely invaluable. Agreed. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here. Make sure you guys go to PwnCastDailyQuest.com. We're still doing the news, still doing as uh, all the things that you need. We also do have a Razor Naga giveaway, the green edition. Razor did give us a Naga to give away on the page. We were pretty excited that Razor acknowledged uh, our awesomeness in that regard, which is code for they just want to sell more shit. And we're going to give it away for free because we love our, our people and we want to give them free stuff that they don't have to pay for. So that is going on till the 29th. So make sure you go to uh, facebook.com slash to enter. Really simple to enter, just like in, in comment and share and all that crap. Uh, but we're going to give it away on the 19th. Blizzard or uh, Razor is actually going to ship it. In, in honor of last week too. I also spy shark week. 
I'm out of here. We're going to get out of here. Thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate that you spend your hour with us every week. We are going to uh, go ahead and... I can't even... We're going ahead. Come on. I'm getting out of here. We're out of here. Bye. 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 Bye.